Burma has a rich literary tradition, but not so many books. Military censorship stifled so much here, and it used to be very hard to get published. This, the country's first literature festival, hopes to rekindle an appetite in the Burmese for books and writing. Its most famous politician has endorsed it. And the display of her own books, once banned, is evidence of how much has already changed, as is the appearance of exiled writers. It is unimaginable, especially when it comes to having the freedom to come, to, uh, come back to the country. And also, the, the, and also it's quite an uh, emotional thing for me to return to the country and be able to see everyone uh, involved in it. The few internationally known authors from Burma have usually been living overseas. This was the first time those living inside the country could mingle freely with foreign authors unclouded by fear. <laughs> this feels like the first day of our literary freedom, said Thane Luin, who also serves as an official in the opposition National League for Democracy. With more openness, freedom of speech and writing, we can make our literature known to the world. That would be a good sign for our country. The festival is supported by the British ambassador and run by his wife. Diplomats are among a whole cast of re-engaged foreign partners trying to ride and encourage Burma's wave of change. And, uh, to see the setting and everything else. This, I've been talking about uh, the groundbreaking nature of this event for a while, but seeing it today, you realize quite how groundbreaking it is. Once an outcast nation, it now offers inspiration to writers from neighboring countries. I just dream for a day when my books are going to be read in China. And, you know, like so many books are beginning to be read in Myanmar. And, um, of course, Mao's portrait will be taken down from Tiananmen. Books, of course, won't solve Burma's still formidable political challenges. They do open minds, however, helping thought to break free from the dark days of dictatorship. Jonathan Head, BBC News, Bangkok.